Praise the Lord. Bless everyone. Thanks for joining us. We are a few minutes late, but that's okay. I just want to quickly start with a song tonight that, um, because of what we're talking about tonight, about um, uh, just the glory of God. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thine hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power For tonight, Lord God, I just thank you that we can come into your presence, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, yes, wherever Lord. we are, Lord, your Hallelujah. presence is omnipresent. Yes, Lord. Father, I just thank you for that. For wherever we are, Lord, we are separated but together. Yes, Lord. And I just thank you for that tonight. Yes, in Jesus, Lord. Name. Jesus Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Technology happens, and when you press the wrong button, you end up diverting. I think it went to my own page, and that's why it was oh. funny. But anyway. But tonight I wanted us to focus and have a look again on a passage from the hiding place from this book. And um, in this part here, Corrie is um, dealing with an issue in the family. It's a sad issue. Her, her auntie, Tante Yance, mm. had developed diabetes and they were, Corrie had to do the tests. And so one day the tests came through. When they took the sample, they realized that it wasn't good. But if I just backtrack quickly that in here, she makes a comment at the end, but I just want to get the emphasis on that. Um, in the village, someone, a baby had passed away and it really upset Corrie. And that night when her father was tucking her in, 
um, her father said to her, uh, she said, I, I can't take this anymore. She said, but that night he stooped through the door. I burst into tears and she said, I need you. I sobbed. You can't die. You can't. Beside me on the bed, Nolly sat up. When we went to see Mrs. Hook, she explained, Corrie didn't need a supper or anything. Father sat down on the edge of the bed, narrow bed, and this is what he said to Corrie. He said, when you and I go to Amsterdam, do I give you a ticket? When they go on the train to Amsterdam, do I give you a ticket? Corrie said, she considered this and she said, why? She said, just before I get on the train is when her father gives her the ticket. And he said to her, exactly. Our wise father in heaven knows when we're going to need things too. Don't run ahead of him. What wise counsel from a father. Mm. Our father in heaven knows exactly what we need. Don't run ahead of him. Yeah. And so in this passage here, her auntie is, um, she's facing uh, what's not a good time in front of her. So Corrie comes through there and the auntie was one of those ladies who was always busy. She was involved in everything, busy in mm. everything. Yep. Uh, and that's how she coped. That's how she did things, I guess. When she knew that things were against her, she looked at it and she was busy doing, it said, all the different clubs and fundraising and writings. And so they wanted to know how to talk to Tante Yance. They wanted to know how to talk to her. And so they gathered there and, and Corrie's father said, my dear sister-in-law, father began gently. There is a joyous journey with each of God's children sooner or later set out on. And Yance, some must go to their father empty handed. But he says, but you will run to him with hands full. You will run to all your clubs, Tanta Anna ventured. Your writings, her mother added. Your funds that you've raised, said Betsy. Your talks, I began. But our well-meant words were useless. In front of us, the proud face crumbled. Tante Yance put her hands over her eyes and began to cry, empty, empty. She choked at last through the tears. She says, how can we bring anything to God? What does he care for our little tricks and trinkets? And then as we listened in disbelief, she lowered her hands and tears still running down her face. She whispered, dear Jesus, I thank you that we must come with empty hands. I thank you that you have done all all on the cross and that all we need in life or death is to be sure of this that jesus did everything and so mother threw her arms around her and they clung together but uh, corrie was frozen at that spot because at that instant she remembered what her father had said all those years ago that our heavenly father knows exactly when to give us the ticket. Mm. And it's not just in dire circumstances like this, but it's in everything in life. Our heavenly father knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly when to empower us, mm. exactly when to release things in that. And what I, the reason I wanted to focus on this tonight wasn't so much you know, the sad content of things, but it's the fact that her auntie understood that everything we do in life, in everything we do, it means nothing at the end of the day we can't bring it with us we've heard that sowing saying so often you can't bring anything with you and so i wanted us to focus on how great our god is and how wonderful he is and pose a question to us tonight what do you do to invest in eternity what do you do to invest in eternity and thanks everyone for watching on i can see aaron uh, maria and beck is there chris how are you uh, Morgana, Jane, Kate, if any questions tonight, just post them in. We're sort of playing catch up at the moment. Marie, how are you? Oh, can we keep Malcolm in our prayer? Uh, we'll explain on Thursday night what's happening on the prayer chain. So we just need some prayer for an ankle injury that he's got. But God is, God is the one that supplies everything. And what do we do to prepare for eternity? And what are we investing in eternity? That sometimes we can get focused on what's around us. And, and here's the catch. Let me start with this. Here's the catch. It can be easy to say, oh, well, simple. We don't do nothing. Jesus did it all. But the Bible says that we're to produce good works in keeping with repentance. The Bible says also that he distributes and he sows the seed to us. And some produce 
30 fold, 60 fold, 90 fold, 100 fold, whatever, and that produce. And so different mm. things that we sow releases a different thing back to us. Mm. So we are charged with a commission to go into the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all men and nations. That none of us as Christians, as I've said before, will stand before the judgment seat and have to give an account of our sins, but we will have to give an account and what we do will be weighed up to see whether it was for God or whether it was for us. And yeah. we can get bogged down in things sometimes. And we were talking about um, a passage that you're going to read in about yeah. Mary and Martha. Can I just backtrack You a can backtrack bit? all you want. Because it's quite deep with what she was saying. Uh, um, where how she held out her hands and she said, Dear Jesus, we come em let us all come to the... Let's all come with empty hands. Mm. There's nothing that we can do in our own works. No. And, and yeah. that's... You know, we, we can get so sidetracked with doing things like she did. Yeah. She did com lots of community work. Yes. And But at the end of the day, she gave all glory to the Lord. Mm. Yeah. All glory. I, th I think... That well, wasn't her. Yeah. It wasn't her. It, yes, it was her working physically, but she wanted to come with empty hands, not presenting anything to the Father yeah. because Jesus got all the glory. Yes. Right? Yeah. She, I just think that that's she had, just I think so... she had a revelation moment where she realised, I don't, I guess it's not so much what she did was in vain. No. I think it was more so that she realised um, she can't take anything with her mm. and you come naked into this world and naked mm. out of this world. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we come before the Lord with yeah. nothing but who we are and what we carry. Yeah. So, and, and in saying that too, there's another verse in the bible that we all know and it's about mary and martha of course and mary uh, jesus went to visit mary and martha and um so i'm just going to read it from luke 10 36 38 as jesus and the disciples continued on their journey they came to a village where a woman welcomed jesus into her home her name was martha and she had a sister named mary Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing, ab absorbing every revelation he shared. But Martha became exasperated by finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. That sounds a bit like me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? That's what Seal says. No, I don't. Say Everyone knows that. it's true. She does everything, so it is true. <laughs> you should tell you should tell her to get up and help me. Mm. And the Lord answered her, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away by all these many distractions? Right? Mm. There's lots of distractions. Are they really that important? Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing. To sit at my feet, mm. she is undistracted, and I won't take this privilege mm. from her. So, what do you That's... think? What do you think that they were doing? What was Mary doing to invest in her eternity? Well, she was having a PD moment. She was having a professional development moment, <laughs> where she was just gleaning. She was. It said that she was absorbing every revelation. Yeah that he shared yeah every revelation that he shared she was just sitting at the feet of jesus something that we just don't do enough of these days yeah is to sit in, and and investing in eternity because it's an, an eternal thing that mm. that that she was doing martha was being distracted by all the different things and not really placing her her um her works into eternity yeah i think it's probably something in our busy microwave lifestyles and we've been because we've been saying we've had a microwave lifestyle ever since microwaves were invented so who yeah. knows how long yeah everything's but instant. everything's instant and we know that and so it's sort of we know that's what it is and and the fact is our lives are just to an instant lifestyle and we're now doing instant church online we now mm. have to we want to get in there and do everything mm. quick we want our work to be quick we want our play to be quick we want our rest to be long uh, we want to do everything to try and do that but 
what do we do to invest in eternity? If everything I do, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we're not here. We have, you know, we're parents. We have a, a, a duty. We have a love, really, to provide for our children in every way. Not just a parental duty, but a love to say we want to see the best for our kids. Yeah. That they can achieve more than we did. But what do we do in that to prepare them for eternity? Do we spend a time and think about what is it in eternity? We can build the biggest kingdom here, but we can't take it with us. And it doesn't no. mean we shouldn't build a great big kingdom. It doesn't mean we shouldn't build things or grow things, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. I guess it's in the perspective of, is what is God telling you to do? Are we prepared to be like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus, glean what Jesus mm. is saying, to receive what he's saying, to bring that revelation out? You know, the... There's a quote I saw before that was, the real measure of our wealth is how much we would be worth if mm. we lost all our money. The real measure of your worth sometimes can be measured by if you lost everything. Have you ever lost everything? Who's been broke as broke as broke? Yes, we have. Yep. I think a lot of married couples, when they start off in the early days, you're as broke as broke as broke. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get your... The, any lounge suite we had a second hand we had a second hand furniture free. yeah we had anything we could get we're actually quite blessed because we were blessed because people gave us stuff a lot of stuff yeah, to us yeah, yeah. and so but that was the era that we were in it was different mm. time i don't want to compare it to today but we understood we understood what it was like to go without as i'm sure a lot of people do uh, because uh, poverty and wealth has nothing to do with your bank balance Wealth has nothing to do with your belt, be with your bank balance. Wealth has to do with the revelation and understanding that he is Jaira and he will provide for you yes. no matter what your bank balance is. Yes. He is our provider. Amen. He is the God who owns the cattle the of a thousand hills. He owns everything. And mm. so we our dad, our daddy is the biggest bank in the world. He yeah. owns all the riches and everything. How great is our God? Yeah. How great and wonderful is our God? So when it comes to investing, I just thought I'd run through some scriptures of what did Jesus say of investing in into eternity? Mm. You know, we know that in Matthew 6, I'll turn to Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6 and in verses 19 to 21, Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy mm. and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, Jesus, and we know that he, he's pointing everyone towards investing in the kingdom of heaven. What about this? Jesus said, one thing you lack, go and sell all, your possession, all you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come, follow me. Mm. What would you do if Jesus said, empty mm. your bank, Get rid of all your money, mm. give it away and follow him. Some have done it. He said mm. this, Blessed are the poor for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Woe to you rich for you have received your consolation. That sometimes people are happy in the, the gathering of things. And this is how sometimes I think we've been brought up in that way. In, in our Western culture, in our, I guess, work life, church life, everyday life. We've been raised in a thing of gather and gather and gather and everything is about building up and building up but i don't believe that's the way the kingdom of god operates so he says whoever does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple luke 14. it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle and for a rich person to enter the kingdom of god luke 18. a person's life does not consist in the possessions that he has luke 12 that's a good one a person's life your mm. life does not consist in the possessions that you have and he says in matthew 6 seek first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and all these things all those other things will be added to you uh, luke 12 sell your possessions give alms provide yourselves with purses in heaven matthew 13 zacchaeus said to the lord behold the lord behold lord half of my goods i give to the poor and jesus said to him today salvation has come to his house in luke chapter 19 sorry that was in matthew 13 the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up um, in luke 21 jesus saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins and he said truly i tell you this poor widow has put in more than all of them 
Uh, Luke 12 as well. But God said to the man who built even bigger barns, he said, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Mm. It doesn't mean, as I said, and I have to reiterate that, it doesn't mean that you, acquiring wealth is wrong. Because he's, he, if our God is rich, we can be rich. It's about a perspective and where we are. That God would desire that we would focus on what are we preparing for eternity? Yeah. What is the point? What is the point of spending your whole working life building a career, yeah. building a kingdom, building a business, building whatever it is, luxuries, mm. and at the end, we can't take anything. Like all of us, we will be like Tante Yance, and we will say, I will come to the Lord empty-handed. Yeah. But more so than that, what are we preparing and what are you investing your life into for eternity? Mm. What are you doing? Do you do personal development like Mary did? Do you have your personal <laughs> development where you are taking time to yes. sit before the Lord and meditate on scriptures, to allow his word to soak over you mm. that it would build you and yeah. encourage you? Yes. Do you take the time to listen and tune the ears mm. to the things of the Holy Spirit? The yeah. word of God says, no ear is heard, no eye has seen what God has in store for those that love him. We don't know what God has in store. Yeah. But one thing we can do is invest in eternity mm -hmm. by fine tuning our ears to mm -hmm. listen to the whispers of God. Mm -hmm. We can fine tune our eyes by seeing what the Lord is saying. We can fine tune our spirit by rejuvenating ourselves in the word of God. And the word says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But that comes about by reading the word of God. Yeah. And so Christians will say, oh, this isn't happening or that isn't happening. And I don't know what God is saying. I can't hear anything. But everything is actually explained in this book. Yeah. Everything is explained in there. But like me and most people, we want to hear those nice bright lights we want to hear the hear the bright lights we want to hear the word of god we word? want to see see the bright lights we want to see what god is doing and so we can get that confirmation and there's nothing wrong with having a confirmation in god but we need to know and say what are we doing to prepare our hearts what are we doing to invest in eternity yeah. i remember a quote from ed cole he said a ton of prayer does not equal an ounce of obedience we can pray and pray and pray, but if we're praying amiss, if we're praying outside the heart of God, we're just bringing false, we're just putting air into the world. We're missing it. But the key in that is how close are we willing to hear the whispers of the Lord? How close are we willing to hear that? And are we prepared to put that investment? Invest. You've got to invest into the future. You've got to invest into your eternity. We invest into our kids. We teach them the things of God. We quote the scriptures over them. We say that our promises of God is the second and third generations. And I yeah. pray that over my children. I pray it over my grandchildren, which we don't have yet. I pray it over my grand-grandchildren. And I pray that because it's God's promise over yeah. us. It's what he yeah. said to us. So we speak over them. We speak what is not mm. as though it is. And we pray that. But then the Lord would say, where's the obedience? And he might say to me, Harry, you've got to make sure that you say this to your son or you've got to make sure that you stop being like that to him. Be nice or do this and to, to my daughter as well. And so we learn to be obedient in what the Lord is saying. And as we learn to flow in obedience, the word says the prayers of the righteous avail much. Mm. So we've got to learn to walk in that righteousness that we can walk with God and be in God where we're starting yeah. to hear. Uh, here's something that uh, the Lord put on my heart as well. Um, the other week we often look in the busyness of lives we often say and who's heard hands up if you've heard you just need to make your margins bigger you need to have your margins hands up if you've heard that make your margins bigger this is what I've discovered in margins doing nothing doesn't make your margins bigger doing nothing doesn't make your margins bigger because you know what happens when we do nothing 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 <laughs> when you do nothing, nothing. nothing happens. Nothing when you do happens. nothing, nothing happens. How many times, just think about a holiday. You say, I just want to go on holidays. I just want to rest. And you go on a holiday. You've got your books. You've got your movies. You've got your itinerary set out. You come back from your holiday. go, oh, I need a rest from my holiday. holiday. There mm. is only one thing that brings rest. Mm. There is only one thing that brings rest. What's that? 
the presence of God. Mm. The presence of God is the only thing that brings rest. Yeah. It is the only thing that will increase your margins. And what I've discovered is making room. We all need to make room in our lives. We all need to have the margins in our lives and make room in our lives. But can I say to you tonight that if you want to make room, if you want to have the margins bigger, invest in the things that edify your body, your soul and your spirit. Invest in the things that edify your body, your soul and your spirit. When we feed these three things, when we become complete and whole and looking after ourselves physically, looking after our emotions and what feeds your emotions and what will pick them up and very importantly, what will feed your spirit, what will build you up, will bring more margin in your mm -hmm. life, it will bring more rest into your life and you're actually investing in eternity. Yeah. You're investing in eternity because of your time with Christ and waiting on the Lord and the things that he has. Paul tells us in Galatians that we are heading towards a season of harvest. So let us not grow weary in doing good. Mm. Perhaps you're feeling weary in this season tonight. Mm. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for those that may be feeling a little weary, feeling a little run down and just everything getting on top of them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I speak, Lord, your presence, your wholeness, Lord, your goodness, Father, would just reach upon everyone right now and bring a peace. You are our peace, Lord. Yes. You are Shema. You are our mm. peace. And I just speak that over everyone, bringing that wholeness, Amen. that Thank calmness, you, and that rest into our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Yes, For Lord. the word says, in due season, mm. in due season, we will reap. In due mm. season. And who's the one that determines the season? When it will mm. go? Well, that'd be the vine dresser. That'd be the gardener. And then the gardener, which is our heavenly father, he knows the due season. He's been preparing us. He's been working us. And he's been saying to us that go to go and invest in our eternity by abiding in the vine, yeah. abiding in Christ and being in Christ. And it says and encourages us, as Paul says, we will reap in due season if we do not give, give up. up. So can I encourage everyone tonight to not give up? Can I encourage everyone tonight to turn your eyes upon Jesus and to realize that while it's okay to gather wealth, while it's okay to do things, because we do it for our kids, we want to build things up and build an inheritance for our children, because Proverbs mm -hmm. talks about that, leaving an inheritance for our children's children, for leaving yeah. an inheritance for everything. It's good to do that, but we have to make the focus on what God is saying, that we would invest our lives into eternity yeah. investing our lives into eternity so when that day comes when he says what did you do what did you do with everything well lord this is what i think you gave me and, and how did that come about well lord i i invested into eternity because i i just spent time with you and i listened to you and i, I wanted to do things and lord i heard you tell me i've got to cut that away so i cut that away i heard you tell me i've got to turn the tv off i heard you tell me i've got to cut that food out i heard you tell me i've got to get mm. into the word more yeah. i heard you tell me i've got to pray more and i've got to get up and rejoice in the lord the word says come into his gates with with what thanksgiving, thanksgiving in our hearts enter his courts with praise right. And we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we rejoice in that. Mm -hmm. So when we learn to bring the word and speak that word over our lives and our families' lives, it's investing, investing mm -hmm. in our eternity with Christ. Mm -hmm. What a joyous day it's mm -hmm. going to be, church. What a joyous day it's going to be when we have eternity with Jesus. So I just want to finish with that and say, be blessed. Mm -hmm. Have a great week. Thursday night, we're going to have prayer. Uh, Beck and I believe Bruce are going to be taking prayer on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And Sunday, Seal is going to be preaching. A great <laughs> word. Seal is going to be preaching. Sharing. Sharing. So be blessed. Have a great week and see you throughout on Facebook or at church.